What's going on guys, welcome to a new video. So today I'm gonna to show you how to target really high quality audiences on Facebook. Um, when it comes to the interests that you pick to kind of put together and create the audiences that you wanna target, and they shouldn't be random, there is a method to the madness. A lot of people just kind of jump into it, pick a ton of random interests, they don't see the results that they hoped for, and then they kind of get stuck and not really sure what to do. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to find those interests, but then also how to test and kind of prove that they're good high quality interests to target, without having to spend a single penny on Facebook ads. So that's the top of the video. Thanks for tuning in, I hope you enjoy it and let's jump straight into it. So here we are then in my computer, before we actually jump into it, a couple of very quick points um, that are super important to mention. So as I said in the intro, interests shouldn't be random. Make sure they are relative to people who spend money in your niche. Depending on what niche you go into, this may not always be possible, but think about it. The people who are most likely to buy a product in the golfing niche are people who are already, sorry, people who are already spending money in the golfing niche because they obviously have that interest and that demand for those particular products. Point number two, to check the quality of your interest, then there's a couple of different things in which you can do. Number one is checking the content of the particular interest you're gonna be targeting to ensure it's relevant to your particular niche. Um, you can look at the sort of posts, the sort of content they're posting, see if it's relevant to people who spend money within your niche, check the engagement. If it's high, then obviously you have a super kind of passionate audience, which makes it a good one to target. There is another way to check this using the audience insights tool, which I'm going to be demonstrating in a couple of minutes um, in this video. If we take a look at this graphic on the right hand side, I've featured this many, many times, but it's always worth bringing out for a video like this one. So the point this illustration is trying to make is that the more passionate somebody is about your particular products, the more likely they are to buy it, which is obviously common sense. If we have a look at the greener circle, the bigger circle around the outside, we have Tiger Woods. He's obviously a very, very popular golfer, um, arguably the most famous golfer ever to play golf. And what this kind of means is that people who don't play golf, people who aren't interested in golf, if you've never played golf before in your life, if you've never even picked up a golf club, the chances are you still know who Tiger Woods is. And therefore, for somebody to go ahead and actually target Tiger Woods, there's gonna be a lot of people within that audience who are interested in him for who he is and not interested in him because they are keen golfers. So by choosing him as an interest, it's essentially gonna be including a lot of people who don't even play golf, and therefore they won't be interested in your product. The bluer circle, a bit smaller, we have Phil Mickelson, who is another really famous golfer. Um, he's won lots of competitions and majors, one of the highest earners on tour. He's not as famous or as popular as Tiger Woods, and therefore his audience as a kind of list of people, because that's essentially what an audience is on Facebook. When you pick a certain interest, you are essentially targeting a list of names, and many people forget this. So his list will be slightly smaller, and therefore it's gonna be higher quality and contain those people who are super passionate and golfing enthusiasts and therefore more likely to buy your product. And in the smaller circle, we have Bubba Watson. If you've never played golf before, the chances are you don't have a clue who he is. The only people who watch it on TV and therefore super passionate about it and probably play the game themselves will know who he is and therefore they're gonna be the people who you wanna target because they're gonna be the people who want to buy a golfing product. So when you found these interests then, or if you sat there now and you've got a couple of interests in mind within your particular niche, or you can even do this for the interests which you've targeted up to this point. You wanna test them using these two methods to see if they are indeed a high quality audience. And I've got a great example to show you here now. So these are two interests here which we can target. One is just dogs and one is called Dogs Today Magazine. They're both obviously interests related to the dog niche. If we head into our Audience Insights tool, and if I just reset this and go back to demographics, so this is essentially what Facebook looks, what's the Facebook Audience Insights tool look like by default. And let's just go ahead and put dogs into this box here. If we head over to the Page Likes tab, and essentially what Facebook gives us is our top categories. So these are the categories that other people are linked to within this particular interest. If we have a look at these, not many of them, just flicking through them now, if at all any of them are actually related to dogs. So what does that tell us? That tells us that the majority of people within this audience aren't actually that passionate about dogs. Otherwise, the top categories within the dog's interest would also be about dogs, if that makes sense. If we have a look at the affinity scores for these as well, so how likely your audience is to like a given page compared to everybody on Facebook. So if this audience of dogs was super passionate about dogs, then the other common pages and the other top categories related to the people within this audience would also be related to dogs. So to target this interest, 
solely is a huge amount of people. It's 15 to 20 million active people every single month. It's obviously going to be super broad and it's going to cost you a lot of money to test through those people before you find those who are actually interested in your product. Another way to think about it is if you had these 20 million people in a room and you had to walk around one by one asking them to buy your products because that's, that's essentially what your Facebook ad is doing. It goes out to people, pops up on their newsfeed and they have a choice to click it and buy it or not. If you had to go around one by one to each and every person, and if every time you went up to somebody and you had to pay 10p to do that or 20p to do that, it would cost you a lot of money before you finally found somebody within this room of 20 million people that actually wanted to buy your product. So you're gonna be wasting a lot of money on ad spend basically. If we remove this interest then and put the other example I had, which was Dogs Today magazine, um, it's obviously a lot smaller but that's not necessarily a bad thing. If anything, it shows us it's gonna be more high quality. And this is illustrated by the top categories. And if we have a look at these, all top 10 top categories are also related to do with things with dogs, which shows us that the people within this audience are super passionate about dogs because the top categories within the Dogs Today magazine um, is about dogs. Hopefully that's kind of starting to make sense. We can also back this up as well by looking at the affinity scores, see how high these are. So we're talking in the thousands versus I think in the dog's interest, it was around about 100, which again just shows us how much more likely somebody is within this interest to like other pages related to dogs. So that is method number one. Method number two is to click on these and open them up. It'll take you to the actual page on Facebook. And we're gonna start looking at the content then in which these interests and these pages are actually posted about. So if we go to Doggy Solutions and see what kind of posts they are posting, um, and obviously we wanna make sure it's related to people who are likely to buy a dog product. And when you find an interest which is posting dog things and has super high engagement, regardless of what niche you're in, obviously make sure it's just relevant to your niche, then you're gonna be onto a winner. So if we have a look at this page right here, we can see that they have a phone number, they have 32,000 people following, which is great. They've got this post from March 29th then, so it's over two weeks old, not a single engagement, which is not great. Um, they're trying to sell some products here, more products by looks of it, they're trying to sell more products. So by the looks of it, these guys are obviously a shop trying to sell things, so naturally their posts aren't gonna get very high engagement. In fact, they're getting like one or two, if at all, which isn't particularly great. It's not necessarily gonna put me off putting it on my list. And the reason being is because these are guys that actually sell dog products. So people who follow this page and are involved in this page are obviously gonna have an interest in dog products, otherwise they wouldn't be linked to it. So I'm still gonna put this on our list. So if I go back to Audience Insights, and it was Doggy Solutions, I'm just gonna copy it. Head back to our spreadsheet, and it's a website slash shop, so I'm gonna put it in there. Um, I've already looked at the magazine one, so Dogs Today Magazine is definitely gonna make this list as well. The way this spreadsheet is structured, then feel free to pause the video and copy it, is always start with the most valuable places, which are obviously gonna be websites and shops, because this is gonna be where people spend money. Obviously, it's gonna be magazines, people have to pay for magazines, they subscribe to magazines, they buy from for magazines, so these are gonna be great places and things to target, and then obviously, third we have brands if you think of certain dog brands or golf brands or sporting brands or lighting brands or DIY brands these are all going to be things that people are linked to because they've either purchased that brand or they have an interest in purchasing that brand which then obviously translates into them being interested in your product if it matches that particular niche. Three other categories in which you can use then um, obviously you can be pretty much unlimited depending on what niche you go into there's going to be ones that apply one that don't apply so it's worth putting some thought into this and perhaps even googling it. We have activities, so obviously when it comes to dog niche, things like dog walking, dog training, dog grooming, these are all going to be things that are only related to people who actually own dogs and therefore have an interest in buying a dog product. TV shows and competitions, in a dog niche it doesn't really apply that much. You have things like Crufts um, and things like that, but it's not really that big. There's quite a few different TV shows, in fact, when it comes to dog training, especially um, in the US. And then third and finally, we have celebs and influencers. Like I said a minute ago, some of these may not apply to the niche that you're currently sat and have your store in, but it's always worth putting some thought into the kind of things, the kind of ways in which people spend their time, and more importantly, the ways they spend their money within the niche in which you're trying to sell in. Moving on then to give you one more example, if we take a look at Countryside Dog Walks, so let's open this up. Now obviously the fact that it contains the words dog walks, chances are there's gonna be people interested in this who have a dog because there's not many people out there who go dog walking unless they have a dog. Um, they might go hiking or walking on their own, but obviously that's different to dog walking in, in its own. So we have 76,000 people who like this, so a decent sized page. We have 
nearly a thousand likes on this particular post, which was posted yesterday. It wasn't posted yesterday. It was posted a year ago yesterday. Um, and then let's have a look at some of their other posts. So March 13th, this was this year, 180 likes. Um, more dogs, 170 likes. Loads of different comments too, which is great. And again, 100 plus likes. Um, we have 10 plus comments on this particular one. So the engagement's really good. So I'm gonna put this one on the list, but I am just gonna double check this as well using the other method in our Audience Insights tool. So Countryside Dog Walk. So we need to delete this off. Countryside Dog Walks. Let this load up. And then if we take a look at all the different top categories, we have perhaps the top Tug Enough, I'm pretty sure that's like a dog brand, um, Herd of UK. We can open these up and see how kind of far down it goes, but by the looks of it, it's just kind of like the top eight, which isn't necessarily too bad. We've got a crazy high infinity score. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen one that high, but then we're talking in the thousand two, which is obviously a great sign. So that's definitely gonna make the list of so countryside dog walks. So with that being said, guys, um, it's been about five or 10 minutes. I found three really good interests in which we can now use to build out our audiences. Uh, perhaps I could do a follow-on video from this one, actually show you how to then string these together and create even more high quality audiences using something called flex tags in which kind of encompasses um, this illustration on the right hand side but obviously i do these videos to help you guys out so if that is something you want to see you have to make sure you let me know um, or perhaps there's another video topic altogether you want me to do or you want me to cover then again just leave a comment down below i see all the comments and i will respond to them all but before you go one very quick thing to mention and i get asked all the time not many people know um, i do run a program called the ecom academy comes with over 120 different video lessons, tons of extra support too from myself, as well as the Academy team, as well as the different Facebook groups. Um, there's loads of different modules on everything from Facebook ads to product research to building your site, literally everything you could ever think of or need to actually start a business on Shopify. So if that is something that interests you, uh, make sure you check out the first link in the video description below. There is in fact a callback service too. So if you hit this button here, book a callback with Jack, it is actually directly with me. So we'll hop on the phone together. You can book a date 30 minutes long and we can just go through any questions you have about joining and put a strategy into place and kind of like the best way to get you started and down the right path. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.